Welcome to video number 11. I'm trying to finish out the uh, roofing worksheet uh, where we left off yesterday or where I left off at the last video was a uh, number of can vents which I'm not going to have. In this roof we're going to have, we have two dormers so on each side of the dormer there is a, a tin shingle area and so that's going to be four. Uh, let's say the house has a satellite dish which takes a a good deal of time to take off and set back up properly and get it working. So I like to account for that. We're going to close uh, roof ridge vents and uh, or we're going to cut the ridge and close in the can vents. That's pretty typical in our operation. It does have a bay window and uh, this is something that's I cut and pasted in but um, this is a soffit to roof. Uh, it's a tight little area. Always takes a, one guy with a crowbar to climb up in there and then there's some detail work to be done afterwards. I try to account for that. And the skylight always takes extra time. Those are, I'm, those are some things I use to remember, to help myself remember that there's some pr tr trouble areas on a roof. Okay, we're going to start. go back and start filling in some materials. Uh, I should probably, uh, I like to have those come back to home. I'm going to put those as a uh, all borders. Kind of makes it easier to see. <coughs> now, we don't have any panes frozen, so I can move anywhere I want to in this sheet. But for the next operation, I'm going to freeze panes come to view, go freeze panes, and it's going to freeze the pane. This is where the total squares, it's going to stop there and everything is going to scroll up behind that. Just like that. Okay, so um, now we're going to start doing the automating part. <sighs> shingles. Uh, this cell, the number of shingles is going to be controlled by that cell equals and we're going to have the total roof area not the total squares because the total squares is with the cap. I'm going to put that number total squares will be over here with the tear off because cap is part of tear off and part of shingling. Um, so okay, the total roof area is 2600. We're going to use definitely going to use roundup on this one. I typed that in. Now I got to that point I press tab. Um, equals the total roof area and we're going to have to divide that by a hundred and then we're going to put a comma number of digits uh, bracket to end the argument enter so there's 27 and some different type of font there See, I have Arial font here. I don't know why that is. And I've got uh, Cal Calibri on the numbers. Well, it's no big deal. <coughs> our, our hip and ridge, we have, we have that entered. In actually, this, this I should have put a marker on that to know that I was this was wrong. Um, Let's go back and correct that because I remember I just threw that in earlier trying to build that part. Hip and ridge equals the our calculations over here. That's 140 lineal feet of uh, hip and ridge, and I've got to convert that. See how it's up here on the formula now? I can see that that's hip and ridge. I should have put lineal feet of hip and ridge. Then it would be more clear what it is. Okay, lineal feet of hip and ridge divided by 33 uh, feet in a bundle. And we probably better go back to the beginning of that and round this up. Press tab. Let's see. Gave a 
us five bundles. No, I'm going to want that over here. Five bundles in our hip and ridge. Gonna, I'm going to kind of reverse engineer this now. Um, this is going to, I got to convert bundles into square foot. Five bundles. Okay, equals five bundles times 33. Uh, enter. 165 square feet. So our cap equals the five bundles. Enter. Now that this is the reason I froze the panes because now I can start working my way up and I can see that uh, all of my calculation areas are still up here. Um, the lumber yard that I used like to use charges me five dollars a bundle for rooftop delivery. Um, so that cell is going to equal our total squares. Five dollars a square. Enter. Metric starter. This equals, I guess this is going to be another roundup. Press tab. I type to that point and press tab. Metric starter is going to be our Eve. Now it's going to want me to put in a comma, the number of digits, and finish off with a bracket. Enter. And I screwed up. Because I should take the uh, Eve divided by 100 lineal feet in the metric starter. See, the metric starter is 100 lineal feet. Now it's going to take two bundles of metric starter. Okay, uh, I'm going to use regular tar paper. So I'm going to take, well, stay with it. Better put the equals in. Roundup. So I can type it all the way, or I can come down here and highlight that, and then tab. Number of squares divided by four uh, squares per roll, comma, zero, bracket, enter. Winter guard, we already figured that up. Just equals. Number of rolls of winter guard, 12. I didn't have to have, I could have done the calculations for the number of rolls of winter guard. I could have done that over here. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay, gutter apron is what we use on the eve. Equals eve. Here again, we, I forgot to put roundup. Divided by, they come in 10 foot pieces divided by 10. Come back up here. Press tab. Come over here. Comma. Zero. Bracket. Enter. 15 pieces of gutter apron to do the job. ODE is the uh, metal that I prefer to use on my rakes. They come in 12 foot pieces. We're going to equal, we're not going to forget roundup this time. Okay, rake there. Comma, zero, bracket, enter. Forgot to divide it by 12. So before the comma, my number of rake, or my lineal feet of rake, and that's how I should have. I should have named that better. I should have said lineal feet of rake divided by 12. Enter. So 145 feet and uh, 
144 is 12 sticks. Instead, I got 13, and I don't mind that at all. Valley equals. Better round this up too. Valley. There, I should have put in lineal feet of valley. Divided by these come in 10 footers. Divided by 10, comma, 0. Now, I don't have to put that bracket on the end. It will do that automatically by itself. So I'm just going to press Enter, and it took care of that. Uh, here's my chimney flashing. Um, I'm going to put a comment. That is a 6-inch flashing storm. That's a price for a flashing storm collar and cap. <coughs> and this is one of those set of questions. Yes, there is one. Okay. All right, just pressed equals and then went up and pressed pipe flashings. Traditionally, it's three inch. Um, I could make this a set. Of, I could do my questions down here and fill those in. Um, for putting out a quick price, I just prefer to use this up here, and I just go with a three-inch pipe flashing. Equals. Enter. Okay, our roofing nails, based on the number of squares. Equals, and this is going to be a roundup again. Our total squares times three. There's basically, one coil of nails will do one bundle of shingles. So I'm taking my total squares times three. I'm going to put a, uh, a bracket on the end of that, on both sides of that. That's going to tell Excel that this is one number. Okay, so now I've taken uh, total squares times three. Um, that gives me the total number of bundles that I've got. I'm going to divide that by 60, because there's generally 60 coils and the coils of nails in one box. And then I'm going to finish the roundup formula. And it's going to take two bundle or two boxes of roofing nails. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to say it's going to take uh, one box of staples to put down the uh, tar paper. One box of staples for every box of roughing nails. So this equals roughing nails. Enter. Um, especially on the taller roofs, the 12, 12 pitches, it takes a lot of miscellaneous nails so I just charge a dollar for that dollar for um, a dollar per square enter okay we're going to use uh, the omni vent with low profile 30 lineal feet in a uh, in a roll equals round up tab 66 feet, and, and here's where I made I wrote it down properly: lineal feet, ridge vent, divided by 30, comma zero. Enter. It'll take three bundles. Actually, it's going to take two bundles and have six feet left over. But for pricing, I better have three figures three figured. These things are my less commonly thing used items down here that are probably not going to be part of the calculations. I just keep them here when I want to. Uh, I always put a base number, like say $75.